Well, boys, it would be hard to call what we've been through fun. But I'm sure glad we went through it together. You boys always managed to give me a good laugh right when I needed it most. Never forget the time you dropped Winchester's drawers in the O.R. Of course, I had to pretend I was mad at you, but inside, I was laughing to beat all hell. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Geek Salad, episode 237. Spoilers. Duh. Part 2. In the first part, we covered some of our picks, but also, mostly, we covered picks that were given to us over social media and from our friends. But now, we're covering the rest of our picks. So, sit back, enjoy, and take it away, Andy. I I will point out one thing, though, is that uh, while... I had two that were pulled. Mike had one. Joe had one. Catherine, nobody mentioned any of your top four. So I invite you to start us off with one of your favorite series finales. Okay. We were, I don't know if it's a favorite series finale, but I think it's the uh, elephant in the room or maybe the dragon in the room. Let's talk about the end of Game of Thrones. All my life, I've known one goal. The Iron Throne. In all seven kingdoms, men will live without fear and cruelty. To the Dragon Queen! She's coming for you. Of course she is. If she wants to take the castle, she'll have to murder thousands of innocent people first. Keep the gates open. Do not become what you have always struggled to defeat. That is my destiny. What if there's someone else? Someone better? What kind of person climbs a dragon? A madman or a king? Okay. Um, I think because, I, Joe, I, I don't know about you. Mike, yeah, Mike, you've never watched an episode of this. No, I have not. Okay. Oh, Joe, have you? Mm. Did you watch this I all have, the yes. way through? What's that? On and off. I, I watched. On. I watched the finale. I watched the finale and stuff like that. So I, I know what's going on. Okay. Um, this was the type of show that Autumn and I watched, and when the season came was coming up, we would go back and we watch the entire series again. Yep. I will. I'll straight up, Catherine. I didn't hate this ending i don't agree with some of the choices they made big time don't agree with them but overall this did not ruin the entire experience for me like i feel is the the thing out there it's like well you know you just rendered seasons one through five moot because the final season was so was so terrible no no it wasn't like again, I'm I'm bringing this up not because it's my favorite uh, se- series finale, but because I feel like nobody else brought it up, and I feel like we should talk about it because it did make a you know when it happened, it made waves, and I think we would be uh, remiss if we didn't discuss it. Yeah. But uh, I didn't see it coming. I should have, but. Again, the season was so rushed because the guys were like, we're going to get to do a Star Wars thing. We have to rush this out the door so we can work Star Wars thing. And then because they rushed it and did such a shit job that they don't get to do a Star Wars thing. So, right. uh, Well, well, that's that was the thing is like the the, the last season felt so. And I think it was just the last season. I think the last two seasons felt so compressed. Like they were trying to tell so much story in such a short amount of time. And yeah, especially they're, they're going in a, with this, it, yeah, sorry. Especially no, especially in a world like like Game of, you know, the world of Game of Thrones, where so much 
is going on at all times. And there are mm-hmm. all these little threads that are interconnected. Like if you try to rush through it, a lot of stuff is going to get missed. Yeah. And you just, it's, just like, like, it's like when they tried to wrap no. up Babylon 5 too fast. It also was just like, this was supposed to be two seasons of stuff. And now we're doing it in one season and it's not going well. And so they were like, they were rushing it out the door. They didn't spend enough time. The characters didn't evolve enough. You know, it was interesting, you know, uh, uh, Amelia Clark was like, now I understand why they had me play certain scenes differently for some takes because mm-hmm. she had a different understanding of the character because they hadn't given her like the full layout. But it was just. Yeah. But but I also feel, too, like there was a certain point where you could tell Martin was no longer in the process because they were given a very, a very structured story to tell mm-hmm. and the just the fucking fact that the winds of winter never came out i think right. really threw them for a loop i mean there's a lot of i mean there were a lot of issues that caused that se- that series finale um and led us to where we were but the fact that they were they were pretty tight on a lot of martin's ideas and storytelling and it just kind of felt like he just abandoned them because you know he had to go eat himself to death or whatever the hell he's well well that's the problem with when you're tr- you're trying to make something you know out of a license of mm. a prop of a property that isn't even finished yet yeah you know, and he given he right. given them the outline he he gave them the outline it's like this is where we're going and they wrote it and they didn't you know the first se- the the seasons where it was based on actual books are definitely better, and so it's like clearly right, because, right. Well, because there was a an understanding from what the book you know the, with the books, yeah, you had you had a very good template to go off of, right? You know, so to so you knew what what was going on, but just going off an outline, yeah, that may have been martin's initial ideas but who knows i mean you know when when the series started you know he was only he was on book four book book five had just come out mm-hmm. so a lot of things could have changed in the subsequent three books that yeah. you know the, the the writers of the show would have would have had no idea about right and, and and again he had a he had an idea where the direction was going but it you know if those novels had come out and they hadn't been well received he might have changed changed course i do remember there was there's a, a a reference to him being in uh, a writer's talk with stephen king and he just turned to stephen king and was like how can you write so fast <laughs> and i'm like well clearly he sold his soul but anyway <laughs> But yeah, and and so who knows if those books will ever come out and if he will change what happened or be able to write the story a little better so that it makes more sense. But it it Yeah. It didn't end like like looking back on it, it's like it didn't end badly. It was it was just clearly rushed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's basically that's uh that's the same conclusion I, I, come, I come to. Right. And I still don't quite understand how they thought that, you know, giving the throne to Bran of all people was the the best idea, but. Well, because, you know, it has, you know, all the, all the Stark children have to do something and Anya's going to, uh, Arya's Arya. going to go around and do yeah. her thing. Sansa is going to be queen in the North. Uh, and, uh, John Stark Targaryen is going to go off and rule north of the wall. Right. And that's what they got. Yeah. Okay. Makes some sense. So, so. It's, I'm, I'm going to say this. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up not because it's my one of my favorites, but because we have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Just re- simply because of the <laughs> just, reaction. Well, just because of the, the reaction it generated. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So who wants to go next? Um, I'll, I'll I'll go next. Okay. And I will come up with my first one, Mash. 
Look, I know how tough it is for you to say goodbye, so I'll say it. Maybe you're right. Maybe we will see each other again. But just in case we don't, I want you to know how much you've meant to me. I'll never be able to shake you. Whenever I see a big pair of feet or a cheesy mustache, I'll think of you. Whenever I smell month-old socks, I'll think of you. And the next time somebody nails my shoe to the floor. Yeah, well, when somebody gives me a martini that tastes like lighter fluid. I miss you. I'll miss you. A lot. Man, I can't believe that nobody else brought this up. Well, I mean, you think about when it came out. I mean, it's yeah. I was I was nine years old when it came. It came out. Uh, you know, the the name of the episode is uh, "Goodbye, Farewell, and Amen," and it came out February twenty eighth, nineteen eighty three. You know, yeah. I mean, I was nine years old. You were what, eleven years old, Andy, or ten? I was I was eleven. Uh, no, I still I was still ten at that point. February, I was still ten. Technically, yeah. My my husband is negative four months. <laughs> but yeah, I know, right? But but it, yeah, it we was were... such a huge cultural phenomenon. I mean, I yeah, I watched Match when I was a kid because it was one of those things. Like when I first moved to the to the states from uh, you know when I first moved to the mainland from Puerto Rico, and I lived with my grandparents up in Haverhill or uh, Merrimack, Merrimack, Mass. You know, that was one of their shows that they watched religiously. You know, so I, you know, I'm a little kid. I'm sitting on the couch with my grandfather watching the mash and, you know, kind of learning the language as I go along. But it was such a huge cultural moment. And I think it still holds the record as the most viewed episode of television ever. It, yeah. It, it, those, not in, including in sporting events. It, no, even including sporting events. I think it, well, at the time. There was more. Yeah. There were more people. Wa- more people watched the the season finale of uh, the series finale of Mash than they watched that year's Super Bowl. And thing and, is, though, and, I think that re- that record will never be broken either because there's just so many more channels now. Back then, well, there you were know, like four it, channels. It, well, you know, and it, also it, just it's for funny. population. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it kind of give you a sense of perspective. People, it, you know, if if your show is streaming, and you get a mil, you know, maybe a, mi- a million viewers, you're considered a blockbuster streaming hit, you mm-hmm. know? But back in those days, a million viewers would have gotten you canceled. Right. You know, and, and, and MASH had, what is it? I think it was said, 121 million total audience. Hmm. You know, and and again, this this was in the days of appointment television, you know, and and yeah. CBS hyped up the 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 finale. But I mean, and but just the show, the the the, the finale itself does a good job of wrapping everything up. Yeah. You know, I mean, Mash was such an institution. I, you know, by the time it ended, I think it was the longest running uh, episodic television series ever. And, and the show, you know, and I the show it, actually it, lasted like two years longer than the actual Korean War did. Oh, much longer. No, than two actually, years. long, much longer. Yeah, the oh, Korean right. War was only four years. Oh, I thought it was. I thought it was five. No, it was four years, and I think Mash went on for like almost ten, or just really? over ten. Nine oh, or wow. ten. Yeah, it yeah. went on a long time. Okay. Yeah, at the time, it was like the longest running te- television series ever produced. Um, but it, it did a good job of anyway. You know, you know, it's like. At the end, you know, you, you get the news that the long-awaited news that the war is finally over, or at least the armistice has been signed. Yeah, and everybody mm-hmm. gets their dream of finally going home. Yeah, you know, and it, it's like it was a perfect. Everybody says their goodbyes, gets on the helicopter, and leaves. Mm. Yeah, uh, my mom was extraordinarily anti-war, so it's not like we watch Mash at my home. But right. I got into well, that, it. But that's, like, a, but that's when the thing. I was living, the, the, the show itself is very she, anti-war. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't enough for her. There were there was war happening. Like my my mom tried to keep. She was like she was such a hippie. She's like I'm going to raise them away from things like guns, and then you know, and wouldn't buy my brother a toy gun or anything until one day. Like, but of course. You can't do that unless you hide people away from all of society. 
So right. like my I think, brother would. I, know, just I just I just, find that, I just find that kind. I just find that kind of I find that kind of ironic because Mash was one of like the most anti-war television series ever, and it came yeah, off. I, I, it was you know it's based on one of the most anti-war movies ever made. Yeah. Yeah. I I I don't know why, but yeah. But I did <laughs> discover it. I did discover it much later, and was like. Like when I owned my first condo, and I would watch it on uh, 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 syndication. Like UPN, ch- yeah, like, channel thirty-eight. Yep, yep, yep. And yeah, no, it was good. I don't think I saw the finale, but I've I've seen enough episodes, and I I did see the movie in college. So well, it's funny because I think the the show had more of a cultural impact than the movie ever did. I think the show outgrew the movie. Oh yeah. It it oh, did, yeah. Although, and a lot of that just has to do with the fact that Mash the movie is such a Robert Alton thing, yes. and Mash the TV show is is an Alan Alda thing. Yeah, very different points of view with how to to how Absolutely. they were approached. But but I yeah I, I I kind of had the concept because of what I saw in college, and then the first episode of Mash that I watched like on my own souped nuts was. The one where you're the injured, uh, it, it was oh, like yeah. you're, the, it, point was of, the first the point person of one, point of view one, and so it, it doesn't require that you know all the characters. It entered, you know, you learn a little bit about the characters as you, as the point of view, are taken around, and so therefore yeah. it was an introduction for me. Hmm. And I, I should definitely like, I would watch more of this show. Yeah, absolutely. It holds up. Yeah. All right. All right. So, uh, Mike, do you want to grab one? Yep. Yep. Uh, I'll go with uh, a show that defined most, you know, most conventions. Uh, the creator had a beginning, middle, and end. He told the whole story in two seasons, and he was like, okay, that's it. No more. And that would be uh, Gravity Falls. Mm. The episode Weird Mageddon mm-hmm. 3, Take Back the Falls. <laughs> Kids! I can't believe it! I thought I lost you two! Mr. Pines, it's really you! I've been hugging strangers to practice for this moment. We missed you, you old codger! (laughs) I've missed you, knuckleheads, too. It's good to have you back. So, what's everyone doing here? (gasps) Yeah, there's like monsters and gnomes. And is Pacifica wearing a potato sack? Hey, even in a sack, I still look better than you. It's... it's a long story. Hey, is anyone going to feed me? Larry King's disembodied wax head wants num-nums. We're trying to ration our food, remember? It Um, is... Gravity Falls is such an insane show. Uh, My son (laughs) loves watching it. Oh, it is a brilliant show. Um, And yeah, like... um, uh, Why am I blanking on the the, the creator's name? Alex Hirsch. I can't think of it either. Yeah, Alex Hirsch. Um... He he. When he went to uh, Disney, he was like, "Okay, it, it it's a two season show. This is the beginning. This is the end." And and he, he he had the whole thing planned out. He had all the episodes planned out. So like you see elements like happen throughout the episodes where like like I I don't get that. And then as it goes along, it's like, "Oh wait, that's how it's it's tying back in." And then by the end, like you see all these elements taken from all the previous episodes. And it all comes back together and it wraps up in such a perfect way. Um, and like people are constantly calling, for like, oh, well, yeah, let's have more. Like, cause let's have another story. He's like, no, the story's nope. done. Uh, I mean, yeah. it, it, it ends in a way that they could tell more, but he's like, no, right, because, it, right, because whole- Dipper can, you know, Dipper and they could come back. Yeah. It's like, you know, you it know, has they- them arrive at the beginning of summer vacation. And it has them leave at the end of summer vacation. That that's the whole story right there. But just the the stories that it tells in between, and the whole like eventual conflict with Bill Cipher, is it, just it, the whole story is just right there, and it's wrapped up in a perfect way that you know shows the depth of, of re- the relationships between the Dipper Mabel and Grunkle Stan, uh, and even um, uh, Grunkle uh, Ford. Yeah. So, yeah, and you know, it shows the relationship between Ford and Stan, and, and all the relationships that you know Dipper and Mabel have formed with all the different people in the town, 
and it's just bonkers and brilliant. It is definitely a bonker show. It yes. absolutely is. But it did. It ended on the right note. Yeah. The fact that uh, there there is a character in the finale and, you know, you, you see him earlier. It's the uh, disembodied wax head of Larry King. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's not... right there. Everything you need to know. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, no, a great show. Great, I, I, I really do love Gravity Falls. Mm. All right. Well, I'll move on to one of mine, um, and that is Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. I'm in Love, uh, aired April 4th, 2019. So I'm in a bit of a panic, Dr. Copes. Uh, I went on three dates with three guys, and I have no clarity on the situation. It's killing me. I'm not eating, I'm not sleeping, and those are usually my two best events. I just, I have to pick a guy by the end of Valentine's Day, and uh, that's today. Okay, Rebecca, I hear you. And I think I have the answer. An answer? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, thank God, you usually want me to figure things out on my own, which I think is such a waste of money. Not today. Today, I have a wonderful treatment for you. A treatment? Is it another pill? Nope. I'm going to show you your future. Oh, you're not Dr. Copian. Mm-mm. You're the dream ghost. Mm-hmm. I'm asleep right now. Mm-hmm. This morning you decided to try one of Josh's green juices and had to run to the bathroom. Fell asleep on the toilet. That's where you are right now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like me. I'm going to assume straight off I'm the only one who watched Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. You got it. Yeah, I didn't watch it. Okay. It's one of those rare CW shows that didn't like go on for a thousand episodes, um, and we binged it all on Netflix because it's it's just this woman who sings. She just anytime something comes into her head, it it turns into a full blown musical number. Uh, the show itself is is amazing, but what's great about the finale is is that they actually explain the whole reason why there have been so many musical numbers throughout the four seasons of this show. And it's all because the music is in her head. She's suffering from um, a myriad of, of different um, mental, m- mental issues. She gets on meds. Uh, she, there's actually a great song, which won an, uh, won, won an Emmy for just accepting to be on meds to help calm herself down. And the whole episode is built around not which guy she's going to end up with but trying to get the music out of her head and into um just kind of out in the open and it's really great too because she doesn't know how to play the piano or how to songwrite or anything so the entire the the episode spends a lot of time getting away from the relationships that she built with the men on the show and more about how to learn how to play the piano and then a year later you, they finally get to her inviting all her friends to listen to the song that she wrote. And the best part is you never hear the song. She puts her fingers down on the keys. She goes to play them, and it just cuts to credits. Hmm. And it, it's just – it is just a really fun show. Um, it, it Just to get a sampling of some of the songs on the soundtrack, you can find those on YouTube. You can find them on Spotify. Um, but I, I, I really, I, I love the show a lot, so I'm not going to bore you guys with it, but it, it, it is just, it's a fun show. The, the music, the musical interstitials throughout the entire series are fantastic. And just the way that they ended it with a finale is great. And, um, yeah, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. Hmm. All right. Cool. Awesome. So Catherine, I think we're back to you now. Yep. Okay. Let's talk about Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yep. I, I knew didn't this was going to come it. up. I don't know how I knew it was going to come up, but it was going to come up. I'm, I'm surprised no one else brought it up. You know, given given the amount of uh, social media feedback we had, nobody mentioned yeah. Chosen. Uh, aired May 20th, 2003. Go on then. Oh, you've done enough. You could still... No, you beat them back. It's for me to do the cleanup. Come on! Got a move, Lamb. You 
It's fair to say, school's out for bloody summer. Right. I mean it. We've got to do this. So, uh, you know, I I didn't get into Buffy right away, but I I had seen the movie and I liked the movie. And then eventually I got into the series, you know, partway through season two. And then I went good place to pop back up. up. Hmm? Good place to pick it up. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then I watched it until it ended. And mm. I also watched Angel, which um, if you are. But anyway. It has moments, but yeah, yeah uh, the final and and there was uh, we kind of threw it away. Somebody else commented on the fact that like you know Anya's just dead. Yeah, that that part I, I always had an issue with that. I liked Anya. I loved Anya. Oh my god! I especially liked his her relationship with um, Xander too. Oh yeah, it was it was perfect. And of course, Xander kept going for the bad the bad girl, and he ends yeah. up with Anya, yeah. and they. They were, they were, oh, uh, yeah. Xander and Anya. Anyway. And, uh, of course, I, like, you know, looking for the clips for this, I just watched this again, and I was like, ah! um, But I, I feel like they did a good coda. Uh, there was, I, I remember it, it hurting a lot at the time, because it was like, oh, this person is dying. This person has a great death. This person just dies. That person we just lost, and it, it was, but it's war, and mm. I haven't I haven't read the comics. I know that there's like more story after that, but yeah, uh, you know, kind of one of the points, and it's not in the the clip I shared because I feel like the clip I shared kind of more captures the end and the trauma of the end. Uh, it's just you know. What are you going to do next, Buffy? And she's like, she might, you don't know what she's thinking, but she might be thinking, I'm going to the beach. <laughs> it's like, because they, they have the chosen, they have so many people, there are, there are other people to help, and they've done such a good job. Mm. And, th- and this is another, this is another, actually a series that was like, they got kicked off of the network and they had a finale and then it was like some other network was like we're going to give you more seasons go in in all fairness I yeah I yeah I watched I didn't watch all of the last season but I did catch the finale and I prefer the actual finale over the you know the the UPN's finale Um, the UPN finale was was great but I kind of prefer this the chosen finale. That it is it is it is very big for yeah. what they did and and of course, you know, Sunnydale is no more. Yeah. We're done with and, Sunnydale. <laughs> and I, Sunnydale. I like how they gave Spike like kind of the ultimate redemption arc. Cuz I really they did. Spike, Spike was one of my favorite characters ever since they introduced him. He was very interesting. He wasn't supposed to be a good guy. Yeah. But he was very, he was, you know, the the, the bad guy in the first season wasn't very interesting, but no. Spike was a very interesting character. And, and you know, uh, James Marsters is really good. Yeah. And they loved him so much that they just decided to keep bringing him back. Yeah. Well, he did, he did play uh, Darkseed on Smallville. Dark side. Did he? They don't spell it right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, uh, that must have been an episode of Smallville I didn't watch. Or like a season. a season? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I watched Smallville Soup to Nuts, and I scratched that one off my honorable mentions list because I have too many fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 was it? No, no, I don't think he was dark side. I think he might have been Brainiac. Oh, no, no, he was, he, yeah, he was Brainiac. Sam yeah. Witwer, who we talked about earlier, was Darcy. And, um, uh, oh, uh, oh. Yeah. No, uh, the, 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 the thing that killed Superman in the comics. Doomsday. Doomsday. Yes, yes, that was Sam Witwer. Yes. The reanimated corpse oh, okay. of General Zod. I'm sorry, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They, there's a lot of D's involved. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Seed. Doomsday. Yeah, DC likes their D-named uh, villains the same way that Marvel loves their green-clad villains. Yeah. Okay, let's Take talk about Green Lantern, about shall that. we? Let's talk about Green Lantern and Green Arrow. That's true, Those too. Are DC. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Fair enough. But anyway, uh, it, it it definitely it definitely made him. So back to Buffy the Vampire Slayer, it definitely made a mark. It was very interesting. Was that they were getting to the end, and like there was some random vampire she fought in an alley who was like, "Who are you?" And she's like, "It's been so long since somebody didn't know me." <laughs> Yeah. And, and yeah, there was there was there was a lot of, you know, I, I've been reading lately that there was a lot of drama behind the scenes, but there was a lot of realness in the show. Yeah. You know, people people trying to find their way, people trying to find out who they are, who they belong with. And it was. You know, it, it meant a lot. And. You know. It, it was a real, like, showing people how to discover yourself. Mm. And, and you know, you don't have to graduate college and go on to that kind of career. You can find your way in other ways. Mm. Yeah. You, yeah, you don't, you don't have to be white collar to be successful. Mm. Awesome. So I, I think that was that was that was a good message. There was mm. there were a lot of good messages in Buffy. Yeah, yeah, they were. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool. So uh, Joe, you're up next. Thank you. All yeah. right. For, all right. For my next one, and I think this one's going to get some reaction. Is um, the episode the, the finale to Seinfeld, just called the finale, which aired on <laughs> May 14th in 1998. We'll be out in a year. And then we'll be back. Could be fun. Don't have to worry about your meals or what you're going to do Saturday nights. And they do shows. Yeah, we we could put on a show. Maybe uh, uh, Bye Bye Birdie or My Fair Lady. Yeah, Elaine. You could be Liza Doolittle. <laughs> Why don't you just blow it out your... Uh, 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 uh. Jill from prison. You think that would make up for the other ones? Sure. Because you only get one call. The prison call is like the king of calls. I think that would be a very nice gesture. And the reason this one made my list is because it finally, something finally happened that I think everybody who's ever watched Seinfeld wanted to happen. <laughs> And that's that the crew got finally got their comeuppance. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because yes. There, this is no secret that that through the entirety of the, the, the series, these were awful, awful people. Yeah. yeah. They have absolutely no redeeming qualities to them whatsoever. And the <laughs> fact that the final episode leaned into that heavily. Especially yeah. when they called the character witnesses. <laughs> you know, basically the spo spoilers. The, the whole premise of the of the, the episode was, you, you you think okay, Jerry Jerry's pilot episode gets picked up by NBC. So you're thinking, 
oh my god he's going to get away with it he's going to he, he's going to he's he's going to get the fame that he's looking for but then he breaks a, a good samaritan law and gets <laughs> arrested and during the trial the, the da brings up basically everybody that they've met during the nine years that the episode was on and just everybody just how <laughs> awful they were yeah to everybody in their lives including you know, adam west and, including adam west and, and and it's great because but even though and and, and it even though you they got their comeuppance they still they don't they the characters themselves don't get it they, they don't, don't understand learn anything they don't learn anything which again just, they just goes to show and the brilliance of the show was that these are awful people. You should not be. Re- it's like Andy, like we, like you always say, it's like characters that people don't get the point of. Right. You know, right. the Seinfeld cast is all of that. You're not supposed to empathize with these people because they are bad people. Right. Exactly. Yeah, they they lost me. I can't remember when they lost me. One of the. One of the episodes I remember where I was like, this is terrible, was uh, when Julia Louise Dreyfus's character was like, I'm going to make this gay man want to sleep with me. I'm going to make him <laughs> switch teams. And she did. And then the next day he switched back teams. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> because reasons to talk. Right. Well, because they, they never learned their lessons. You yeah. know, and it's like and and you finally think, OK, they're. Yeah, they're finally getting their comeuppance and getting, you know, facing their, you know, you know, but then they still don't get it. They still don't learn. And they, they, they when, I, when, I, when I was reading up on this, I learned that Larry David, they brought Larry David just specifically to write this 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 episode. Right. Nice. And he and he nailed it. Yeah, they just sit in a, they just sit. It's like you are sentenced to sit in a cell and bitch at each other forever <laughs> right for, well they, yeah they got sentenced to a year in prison and they just cut to jerry doing a stand-up routine in the prison cafeteria now nobody's laughing you right. know it, you, only kramer's laughing but he still doesn't get remember, it he doesn't get I why remember, he's in prison i remember them just being in a cell together bitching at each other about how the world's how they all disagree about how the world should be yeah <laughs> Yeah, I just you know the thing with Seinfeld was I I watched it religiously for the entire run, not not yeah, counting the first too. season because nobody watched it in the first season. Oh, the first season that first season is a tough watch. It's rough too because yeah, it, it it suffered from a lot of like this is completely a different setup. I can't go back and rewatch them though. There's just something there's to me at least there's no rewatchability to the episodes. And I don't know if it's, it's because. The episodes are well. You know what? You know, you know, well, you know what? Twenty five you know years is, old it's, now plus. Well, part of it too. Part of it too is when you have a show like it's always sunny in Philadelphia, which I always said it's basically Seinfeld on crack. Yeah, it is because on unlike Seinfeld, the 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 crew of it's always sunny makes no pretensions to being good people. Right. They know they're bad people, and they lean into it. Whereas the Seinfeld crew always tries to justify their bad behavior, so that they make themselves to be as good as they think they are. Mm. Mm-hmm. Whereas the It's Always Sunny, it's like no, they, it, there's an honesty to It's Always the, to the people in Always Sunny that there isn't in the Seinfeld crew, and I think that's why I, I can watch It's Always Sunny more than I can watch Seinfeld. Yeah, and also Seinfeld is very, you know, you guys were talking earlier about how Newhart still stands up. I feel like Seinfeld is very dated. Well, yeah, it's a very, it's a very much a product of its time, you know, of the right, the 90s. right, right. Yeah, and I feel, yeah, yeah, no, it, it very much is, is, it's a product of its time. But even like Joe Sonny, Sonny needs to fucking end. <laughs> oh no, you're right. No, it it it's yeah, it it's, it needed to end five been, years it's ago. There. It's just like it's getting there. 
Yeah, it's just one of those things that it just it's kind of like Animation Nation on Fox where it's like, why are some of these shows still on the air? Seth MacFarlane left Family Guy. Why is this still on the air? They won't let it die. Even no, even Seth won't. MacFarlane said so even Seth MacFarlane's like, let it die. Yeah, please just kill oh, it. Oh boy. Kill it with fire. No, he, he yeah, he doesn't he's he's not involved in the the show running. He just does the voices and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So all right. Well, I know I've got one left because of Twitter. Um Mike, you've got two left, and then let's let's uh, circle back to Catherine here because you guys <laughs> both have two left on the list we haven't covered yet. So, Mike, okay. why don't you take one, and Catherine, go back to you. All right. Um, airing on May thirteenth, twenty twenty one, Castlevania. It's been a strange ride. What are all these people doing here? Welcome to my village. <clears throat> you have a village now. What's it called? Treffy. Can someone please come over here and kill me? (laughs) You look weirdly happy. I... I weirdly am. It's been a strange ride. I'm happy it's over. The funny thing is, for the first time in my life, I have absolutely no idea what happens next. I just have this feeling that it's going to be worth it. That's exactly it. I'm weirdly happy. Um, oh, that was a that was a good episode. That was a yeah, good I mean, it, technically speaking, the the final episode was actually the whole thing was kind of an epilogue because the like the climactic battle happened in the previous episode, but there was so much that happened in this one. Um, it just wrapped up everything. It. Um, it gave kind of it kind of gave everyone their happy endings too, um, you know. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, um, Alucard even says that he feels weirdly happy um, because for the first time he doesn't really. There's like there's no big bad to fight against. There's just like forming his village and like helping helping everybody you know live. And nice, yeah, and you now it's. Um, and you know Trevor and Sypha kind of have their happy ending in, in the village as well, and uh, even a couple of people you don't expect to to have happy endings get their happy ending at the end. So yeah, it's it's just this uh, an episode to wrap up, wrap up everything, and it does it really really well. But it's it's not a big huge action set piece because that happened in the previous episode. It's just a quiet. It's like Okay, this is this is how everybody's coming together. This is how they're they're gonna continue until we maybe get our our um, spinoff series, which I'm still waiting for. Yeah. But yeah, well. it's yeah, it's just it's a wonderful just wrapping up of a, a very intense series. We haven't finished watching like the series yet. That's one of those ones that we put on sometimes. It's good to know it goes well. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. I've yeah, been spoiled. And, it goes well. Woo-hoo. Yeah, and even even the climactic battle, it it it, it works so well. So yeah, um, I, the you know it, the, I was I was worried that it wouldn't stick the landing because the first three seasons were so good. Yeah. But no, the fourth season just as good, and it just it, they stick the landing completely. Nice. Yep. Yay. Oh, excuse me. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. All right, Catherine, you're up. All right. The next time, uh, next one I'm going to talk about is uh, the series finale of Farscape. He's putting some sort of. Looks like a ring on her finger. A ring? Uh, a ring. <laughs> You frolics! Didn't you watch any of those those, 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 those Earth movies? Crichton just proposed. Mm. Proposed? What? Marriage. Marriage. Idiot! Oh. Mm. 
The episode is called Bad Timing. It aired March 21st, 2003, after a three-parter of, like, all the stuff. And then it was like, okay. So my story about watching this was I watched it with the friend that got me watching the show. And I'd, like, gone back and done the homework, learned about the show, and people talk about the final season of Farscape being made for, like, the 15 fans that were watching it because it was very deep in the mythology. But we were into it, and we watched it at another friend's house. We're like, yes, we'll come over to your front, come over to your house, but we have to watch Farscape. And she was, and the person that was hosting us was like, okay, fine. And we get there, we watched it. And the end of the episode happens where this couple that we've been following for four seasons appears to disintegrate into dust. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend and my, my, my late friend Emily and I turn to each other and with tears in our eyes and are like, oh my God. And we know that the show's been canceled. Yeah. And we were like, oh my God. And our friend's like, what's the big deal? And we're like, you have no idea how much they've gone through to get to this point. And oh, my God. And everybody. And oh, my God. We were like, so with Dargos just screaming <laughs> at the yeah. end of this. Um, thank goodness somebody found money and did uh, the Peacekeeper Wars. Yeah. How long how long after the finale did the Peacekeeper Wars come out? I'd have to look, but it was it was a while. You know, it wasn't, it, it, it was a long while. I now have them, I now have it all on Blu-ray and I like put out a thing <laughs> on Amazon and I was like, tell me when Peacekeeper Wars is available on Blu-ray so I can watch it again. And then like so, the minute it showed up on Amazon, I was like, give me. All right. So yeah, um, the, so the, the first game finale was March 21st, 2020, uh, 2003. Peacekeeper Wars were October 18th, 2004. So a little over a year yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. A year and a half later, we got to find out what happened. And I, like, kind of picked up in the finale that they weren't going to get destroyed. They were being collected, kind of. But it was still just really traumatic and really upsetting. Mm. And then I was collecting, you know, like, going going on YouTube to collect the clips and I'm like, I have to watch them explode again and I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I know it's going to be okay, but you know, I, I, I've, I've met some people who don't get invested in the character lives as much as I do. And I'm just like, I'm like, I can't even talk right now. I like had to type to my husband. I'm like, he's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, I have to type. I'm I'm researching the clips to share so that we can get the clips for the show, and yeah. I have to watch people I've cared about, you know, fictional oh. people I've cared about die again. I'm really upset. And this was one of them. And just also remembering, because, again, like, I watched this and talked about this with a friend of mine who has since passed. So it's also bringing back memories of, like, uh, a real person who died. Yeah. Mm. Of uh, cancer, so. Mm. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah. So it's a bit tough, but. I can understand that. But, yeah. But the, uh, I, I did, I did very much appreciate that they gave us the Peacekeeper Wars uh, uh, movie to yeah. wrap everything up after this. They they, they, they got yeah they they got canceled um before they knew that they were going to get canceled so they couldn't wrap up the story and so that that it ended on a cliffhanger and uh but yeah gratefully the money came and we got the rest of the show not not as much story as they wanted to tell but yeah. enough story to make us happy mm. so awesome all right. Awesome. Next. All right. Well, that leaves us each with one. So I think real quick, let's hit on just quickly hit on our honorable mentions. 
Uh, so anyway, um, so I'm just going to quickly go over these. So we honorable mention somebody that already mentioned Mad Men. Um, fantastic way of wrapping up the series, closing Don Draper's story. Shit's Creek was actually it's just called the happy ending. And it's it's a great way of wrapping the show that was like this nothing show that became a phenomenon. Um, I don't know if that had anything to do with the pandemic or not, but a lot of people watch it and it's a lovely ending. Um, Boardwalk Empire. Uh, it's tough because the show fell off in quality for like a season and then they spent the final season telling a backstory to tie it to um, a moment in time at the very last episode. Uh, fantastic. And then I'd be remiss if I didn't say the Mary Tyler Moore show where everybody but Ted is fired um, because the uh, somebody bought the network, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the network. So the Mary Tyler Moore show is just an incredibly funny show to begin with. Um, highly recommend watch mm -hmm. the uh, a, a funeral for a clown yeah. for the the funeral of uh, Chuckles the clown who was yeah. dressed up as a peanut and then stomped on by an elephant. <laughs> Mike, what do you have for honorable mentions? Um, well, I've got just one really. Uh, it's just uh, Voltron Legendary Defender. That's the okay. Netflix series. And it was a fantastic finale. The only th reason it didn't make my list is, be well, one, we only had four picks. And uh, two, going from one of the worst characters in the show to one of the best by the end, I really wanted Lance to have his happy ending. And he had a happy ending, but not the one that I thought he deserved. So and I, 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 think, I think Joe knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I wanted him to have that happy ending, and the fact that he didn't get it just kind of chased me a little bit. But the rest of the show was absolutely brilliant. Nice, nice, Joe. I noticed you don't have any honorable mentions on yours. So I, I, I don't, I don't. But I actually, I do have one that that I thought about that I just thought about, and yeah. um, it's the series finale to uh, Cowboy Bebop. Okay. What, the, um, the live action one? <laughs> no, yeah, pff, no. <laughs> we'll, we'll just forget. We'll just forget about that one. <laughs> I hear no, the music. No, it's the the, uh, the um the finale to the anime series because it was it had everything that made the Cowboy Bebop series so good. Um, great music, unbelievable fight scene, and the end was just gut wrenching. It was a mm. you know it. I will say it did not anybody you know anybody who's seen it knows that it did not have a happy ending. No, it doesn't pull any punches you know? either. No, it did not pull any punches. I mean, the antagonist got what 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 what, what had, he had coming to him, but the protagonist didn't come out of it good either. Yeah. You know, especially because he was somebody who always managed to get himself out of scrapes, but Spike Yeah, no, he didn't make it. He did not make mm. the end. Yeah. Oh. There's a limit to his luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, basically, he, he ran out of luck is what it was, you know, but it it, it made sense that he he it, it was his time, basically, what it was come. It came yeah. down to. Yeah. So. So that's awesome. my honorable mention. Thank you. And Catherine, you get a few. I do. Um, I'm kind of lumping uh, several of them together. Uh, right. Greg the Bunny from 2006, Wonder Falls from 2004, and Firefly from 2002. All of them were one season shows that got cut up, that uh, Fox stopped before they even finished their seasons. Fox canceled the show early? No way. No way. Yeah, right? Um, <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. Well, given that there's there's three of them on my list that I all enjoyed and own all of them on DVD, uh, mm. and but I've also watched the commentary tracks. And among other things is the fact that like I can't remember which commentary track was, but it was like we were told we weren't supposed to have a uh, opening song with lyrics because they you know of residuals, but they all wanted a song that explained the plot, and they all got canceled. <laughs> so like all three of them were like we were told not to have a song with lyrics and we had a song with lyrics 
to be our opening sequence. It's like, okay, yeah. To, um, but so I, I kind of feel like maybe that was one of the reasons they all got cut. Mm-hmm. Even though they were they were wildly popular, it was just like, yeah, they don't want to pay for it, and you ignored what management told you. Um, but I think they're all they're all fun. And it was worth getting them on DVD so we could watch all the uh, all the season. Um, nobody brought up Lost. Honestly, it's because it's so divisive, and I don't even know. I'm like, I didn't hate the ending, but I don't really know if I liked it either. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't yeah, bad. I, I kind of got what what he was going for. Lost was like, like uh, you know, I, I got binging into Lost like I got binging into uh, Breaking Bad because my coworkers were big into Lost. And I was like, I got to catch up and watch this thing so I could talk about it with my coworkers. Yeah, we, we'd watched the entire series and it was just like, OK, well, that was nice. I'm going yeah, to bed like, now. Oh. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, OK. OK, bye. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the final season was weird, but I don't mind it. You know, there were, like I mind other middle seasons more than I mind the last season of Lost. And then the last one of my honorable mentions is uh, Titus. Okay. Which was uh, the sitcom based on Christopher Titus's stand up. Hmm. And. Uh, more, he was also on Fox, and he was like, I know there's a god because I lasted three seasons on Fox. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, he did well, and they, uh, but like the last, the last official episode, Titus, you know, he's, he's been dealing with, you know, his family's got mental illness issues. His, you know, his mom was a paranoid schizophrenic who killed some people. And in, in real life, and that's kind of how he deals with it in his, is in his comedy. And so the character is like, I'm going to check myself into a mental hospital and I'll be here for a little bit. And that was supposed to be the end of one season. And then they pick it up in the next season and then they got canceled. Huh. And then during the pandemic, he like reached out to everybody that was in the show, many of whom had become like his real friends, including Zach right. Ward and who had played his younger brother and was like, you want to do a thing? And so like many years later, you know, during the pandemic, they wrap up the series <laughs> in a two parter that they did online. And uh, I watched it a little while ago and it's really fun. Cause they were like, they wrapped it up. He was like, yeah, you guys were supposed to come get me out, and you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and they they wrap up the story, and it 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 does very well. So it's you know there was the the series finale on network, and then they you know like like with Farscape and some of the other things where they and, and Babylon Five where they had like TV movies later to give you more of the story. They gave you a two parter give you more of the story and after you watch the first two part of the like next one's in 15 years no just kidding you can watch it now (laughs) fun awesome all right with that we have one pick each Catherine, you want to close out your your list here all right you know you want to throw out xena warrior princess at the beginning of the list you can throw out xena warrior princess at the beginning of the list so (laughs) A friend in need. But if I bring you back to life, your souls will be lost forever. That is not right. to me. Don't you know how much I want to let you do this? But if there is a reason for our travels together, it's because I had to learn from you. 
Enough to know the final, the good, the right thing to do. I will speak a little bit about the final season of Xena. Uh, that was when they finally changed the opening sequence and then were like, you're not getting a new season. They're like, okay. <laughs> and uh, at that point, you know, because it's syndicated television, the network was like, you know, do whatever. They were like, you bet. So you get episodes like you were there. And also they were struggling a little bit because uh, uh, Xena ran for six seasons from 1995 to 2001. Can you guess what else was filming, starting to film around 2001 in New Zealand? Oh, ah. yes. Lord of the Rings took away people like Carl Urban and a lot of the stunts stunt actors and a lot of the crew members mm. so they were just like we're gonna do whatever but they they put a lot of effort into the series finale a friend indeed it's a two-parter it kind of goes back to the original season where you know basically Zena's just going around atoning for the horrible things that she did um when she was uh, a warlord mm. and um but she's also like passing on her, you know, she's been passing on her knowledge to Gabrielle and other people all along the way. And she's finally, you know, passing along the last knowledge that she wants Gabrielle to know. And it's it's just, you know, the 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 character show, like, yeah, sure, Xena was a spin-off of uh Hercules the Legendary Journeys, but it is definitely the superior show. Oh yeah. No Absolutely. one's gonna argue with that point, I think. And it's yeah. honestly, it's so gratifying now to see what a loser Kevin Sorbo is that it's like, <laughs> yep, I think we all back the right horse. Yeah. Lucy Lawless and, and, is still uh, doing movies with budgets. <laughs> yeah. Well, she did marry Robert Tappert, who is grew up with Sam Raimi. So that kind of gives her an edge. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. But she's also seems to be but, a very delightful human being. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She didn't turn oh, yeah. into garbage like Kevin Sorbo did. Oh God! Yeah, no, no, no. In uh, in the book, if if Chins could kill by Bruce Campbell, she she punked him once at a uh, fan convention. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> but yeah, and you know she's in she's in the original Sam Raimi Spider Man. It's like guy with eight arms sounds kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know she's just she's just great. Yeah. Um, and the the final season, you know. All of the seasons are a delight. You know, everybody's invested, totally invested. And, you know, they they found out what fans were taking from the show and were like, we will now like adjust to that and but mm -hmm. not cut other people out. We will write to everybody. And it's. Oh, I just I love the show. I love the show so much. I was in the fan club for a while. And yeah, I. I you know, getting doing my homework for the show, I I put on like you know got the DVDs out and watched the final two episodes, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> you know, <laughs> crying because yes. it, it's it's meaningful. It it it's meaningful. It's it's well done. You know, especially with the budgets and the special effects. You know, for like back in the day. Right. Right. Awesome. It just, awesome. Thank I you. Could, for I could that. I could I could do a whole episode about Cena, but anyway. <laughs> oh, awesome. Thank you, Catherine. So uh Joe, what's your final episode? Uh my final episode is uh actually from one of my favorite shows from the nineties, uh the Wings finale. After nine years, Wings is saying goodbye. I'll miss you. In one day their lives change forever. <laughs> With brothers divided. This is goodbye money. A marriage threatened. Be apart from each other. A one-hour must-see event. Wings, the final flight. NBC Wednesday. Um, final Approach 2. It was a two-parter. It was a two the, the series finale was a, it was a two-parter. Right. And, and the final episode was good because it kind of just wraps up everything that happened. You kind of knew everything that was going to happen. That, you know, they, they kind of set up for the entire eight seasons, you know, like Joe goes off with Helen, you know, Helen finally gets her chance to be 
to to be a, a concert cellist in Vienna, you know, and, and Joe gets the chance, you know, he's like, well, okay, well, I'm not going to stop you from following your dream and stuff like that. And then Brian finally grows up and decides, well, you know what? I'll run the airline for a year mm -hmm. so you can go with Helen and stuff like, you know. Yeah. And, and it, it also this, is great because it ties back into the first episode with the whole treasure hunt thing. Right. right. Well, yeah, that was kind of a running plot line of the entire series. It's like their father hid some treasure. You know, Joe never believed it. Brian always believed it. And, you know, it kind of finally came true. You know, it, it culminated in the last episode, you know, when they found like $250,000, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it was it's a sweet ending because the show itself was a very sweet show. Yeah. You know, it, the humor, yeah. it was very light humor. It was very, you know, it was, it was a very traditional kind of sitcom mm. and with likable characters and, you know, typical sitcom situations. And it, it had a happy ending. And it's just kind of like it, it was very up, a very uplifting show and with a very uplifting ending. I, yeah. I, I, agree. I loved Wings. Yeah. I didn't I didn't follow it religiously, but. Whenever I saw it was on, I would watch Wings. It was kind. Of, it was really kind of. It really flew under the sh under the radar. Pardon the pun. Yeah. Um, God damn it, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it for the entirety of its run because it was never like a top five show for NBC or anything like that, and it got moved around a little bit during its run. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it had a solid base of fans and people who enjoyed it, and you know it 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 was a solid performer. Mm. I'll, I'll give it that. I, yeah. I never. It, no, go ahead, Mike. I I never watched it when it was first airing, but like when it was in college, I caught it on USA, and I watched the entire thing. I I, I couldn't get enough of the show. Yeah, because again, it, it had likable cat. Yeah, it had likable characters, people you could relate to. Spinoff um, of uh, Cheers, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Another, yeah, another uh, Cheers spinoff. Yeah, because it was it, it took place in Martha's Vineyard, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, yeah. It and was this, but, yeah. I was going to say it was a local show. Yeah. yeah and the first and during couple its, seasons, you you saw like Norm and Cliff show up on a yeah. on the island for a couple times. But during its run, also, it, the it, like during the heyday of its run, it had Cheers as a lead in. Yeah. So you Exa had that going exactly. On. Yeah. And yep. I honestly think that Thomas Hayden Church's Lowell was a fantastic character. Oh, and, yeah. you know, obviously he moved on to Bigger and Better, and we were kind of introduced to Tony Shalhoub at that point. But yeah, well, he, it's, he moved it's on kind to of bigger. Interesting. I wouldn't say better. It is kind of interesting that Thomas Hayden Church and uh, Woody Harrelson both got their starts as being big, dumb guys. Right, yeah. exactly. But. So, but yeah, awesome. I mean that it, it, it was a nice, sweet show that ended in a nice, sweet way. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. All right, Mike, you wanna? Yeah, uh, airing your list? on April eighth of twenty twenty three, just earlier this year. Yeah, my um, sister's birthday. Yeah, uh, the Owl House, watching and dreaming. You can't defeat me. <laughs> Do not underestimate me, Bellows, for I am the Good Witch Loose, child of the human realm, student of the demon realm, and warrior of peace! The Owl House, they, they kind of got shafted a little bit with their last season. Like, um, they they were they were informed basically after the second season that yeah you you're getting a third season to wrap everything up, but instead of like twenty episodes, you're getting three episodes, and they're gonna be like forty five minutes each. Um, so like the first two episodes, they're really good, but they feel there are moments that feel a little rushed. The last yeah. episode, though, it felt like they kind of like rushed a little bit of the first two episodes so they could take their take a little bit more time with the third episode. It, it, they're a little rush moments, but for the mo most part, 
it really clicks and like you get the final confrontation with uh bellows who is like the big bad ever since the very start of this of the series and um yeah it, it really focuses in on like the the three main characters uh Ida, the owl lady king and uh and Luz. and it just shows like how their uh, how their relationships have really kind of their bond is what really kind of helps bring Bellos down. And then like over the end credits, you get like a four, four year time jump epilogue. And it just, it ends very sweetly. It has a nice, like they pull out and have like a giant shot of the majority of the cast. So even all of the, like a lot of the side characters you've come to love and know and love. And they all just say, bye. And that's, you know, that's how it closes out. But it's, it's fantastic. You know, you got the uh, one, uh, you know, the, the main character lose and in a lesbian relationship with you know, her rival turned girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's like one of the first animated shows to actually have a very prominent, you know, same sex relationship um, between the main characters. Uh, and you know, uh, right. um, one of Luz's best friends has two fathers, and they share a nice little kiss in the in the finale as well. Um, and you know, it, you know, they go out of their way to redeem one villain while showing that yeah, you know, it sometimes not every villain can be redeemed because Bellus is just a piece of yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is. In in fact. Yeah, as much as, you know, Disney kind of gave them the shaft, what was nice is that afterwards they put the entire the entire finale on YouTube uncut. And in fact, shortly after that, they took all three of season three episodes, cut them together into one long movie, which is how they kind of were, and put that on, on um, YouTube for everybody to watch. So, it, yeah, I cannot recommend this show highly enough it is so fantastic um you know uh all for season all three seasons are on disney plus and if you want you can watch the first two seasons on disney plus and then watch the three episode finale as one big long movie on youtube so no need highly highly recommend it. it is brilliant it's so sweet and so great and dana terrace deserved much better she was a creator all right. I'm sure. I'm sure she'll get other work at some point. Then. Yeah. But yeah, not with Disney though. She's already kind of told them, "Nah, uh, I'm done." Gotcha. All right. Well, I guess that leaves me with the final one here, and probably the most recent series finale, uh, yeah. Succession, with open eyes, which aired uh, May 28th of this year. So two days ago. Two days ago. Yes. I'm good for this company. I'm. I'm. I'm good for us. You know, we all vote. We keep control, we don't, then everything's over forever. Uh-huh. Here's the thing. I am like a cog built to fit only one machine. If you don't let me do this, I mean, it, it, it's the one thing I know how to do. Well, it's not all about you. I know. Yeah, you are not the most important one. I, I, I don't think I am. Yes, you do. You do. You do. You fucking do. You do. But, Shiv, honestly, it's so fucking crazy not to just let me... Now, I mean, it, 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 it's it's stupid. We we all get something here. I mean, you're voting against yourself. You realize that? Uh, mm. Shiv, mm. Shiv, listen, please. I beg you, listen. I can do this. I don't think you'd be good at it. What? I don't. I don't even believe you. I don't believe you. I don't. I don't think that you would be good at this. For fuck's sake, Shiv. I don't know if any of you. <laughs> And I was worried by putting this on here that it was solely like recency bias mm. that I'd put it on there. But I was like, I've been thinking about this, this finale nonstop since Sunday night. It did everything it needed to do. It's the entire series is Shakespearean. Um, it's, it's one of those shows that I described autumn and I were watching and she's like, what is it about this show? That's so enthralling when I feel like nothing is going on. And I'm like, that's its trick. It feels like nothing is moving. Nothing is going on. And then by the end of the season, you're like, oh, man, a ton of stuff just happened. 
So that's like that's that's the beauty of how the show works. Th- this fourth season, so much stuff happens and instead of it happening over the course of, you know, like a like a TV year, it takes place over every episode takes place like the day after the last episode. Uh, so it's a very short time period. It take it, it it revolves around this acquisition that um, Brian Cox's character wanted, and the children need to make happen. But they want to scuttle the deal because the oldest child wants to run the company. Um, it's 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 tough for me to get into without getting into like full character breakdowns because I know the three of you haven't watched it, but <laughs> it's. The 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 ending of the show is so satisfying because of the way that there are no there's no good people on succession. Not a one. of Yeah, them. that's yeah. No, I was uh, my coworkers were talking about this yesterday. Um, the fact that they, they love the show, they think it's great. And you're just constantly rooting against everybody. Exactly. And everybody kind of like ends up in a varying degree of and again, spoilers of if you've made it this far you know they're going to be spoilers um everyone ends up with the degree of not getting what they want um karen calkin's character roman i and again i just can't get over the fact that fuller wets the bed is such an amazing actor um <laughs> karen calkin gets off the best because he no longer has to concern himself with having to be part of the company uh, Sarah Snook's character Shiv is kind of in the middle. She didn't get what she wanted. She was screwed out of it by her husband, um, who she is in a loveless marriage with. And essentially, he decided that he was going to take the job that she wanted because he is just willing to bend. And that was that was a big part of it. His um, Alexander Skarsgård plays. Um, the guy who's trying to buy the company. And he literally tells Tom, uh, Shiv's husband, you know, there are times I look at your wife and I want to fuck her. And he's like, oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, exactly. And then, oh, man, Jeremy Strong's uh, Kendall is just left with nothing. He wants to be his dad. And the only thing that he's going to be like his dad with is the fact that he's got his dad's old bodyguard like 30 paces behind him at all times that's it it ended so well and it's one of those things that when we think about like all of these finales that we talked about uh over the course of the last two plus hours and probably two episodes um that we're told you know this is going to be a a finale we're going to talk about 10 years from now and 15 years from now and hell 40 years from now if we're looking at mash um and that's i think that's really a sign of a good series finale so highly recommend that you watch succession even though i kind of spoiled the ending for you but forget about that i'm gonna use the men in black flashy thing you know what um i'm maybe but it's full of hateful characters it is and i'd it is. rather rather finish watching showing farscape to my husband which is mm. full of characters we love yeah. okay fair enough fair enough well, that was a great conversation. I enjoyed that one, guys. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, All that right. was cool. great. And, and, and also, Brian Cox. Brian Cox is amazing. Yes. Oh, he's so good. And everything he does. Yeah. Um, it's actually really great, too, because Alan Ruck, you know him as um, Cameron from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, plays the uh, um, Logan Roy's oldest son. And in the last episode, actually does a fantastic spot-on impression of him. It's hilarious. Nice. But... So anyway, I want to thank everybody who took the time to let us know what their favorite um, series finales oh are. So all much you. awesome feedback. Awesome. Yes, thank you. And you all get shout outs, as you're well aware from the <laughs> episodes as they go here. So next episode, because <laughs> we're going to get a little more tight with our release schedule now that I'm taking the summer off from theater. Um, and we are going to ask the question, what if? Uh, because what we want to do is we are going to take beloved films that underperformed at the box office and we are going to rework them and recast them as if they are brand new for the 21st century so think about that movie that you love that did not do well like a childhood classic that you absolutely loved that underperformed 
and pretend it doesn't exist. We are going to take that and we are going to attempt to make it palatable and successful for a modern audience. So I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys say. We're going to keep our, our suggestions to ourselves and then kind of put it to the producer's booth and see. So we'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. And if you, there's any movies that you would want to completely revamp, uh, you can let us know by uh, following us on Twitter at Geek Salad Radio and at Facebook on Geek Salad Podcast. You can do that. Also, if you're brand new to the show, thank you. Welcome. And uh, if you can check out our archives pretty much where you're listening to this right now. So YouTube or uh, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts, we are there. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're on iTunes, give us the five-star review. You don't even have to listen. Just be cool. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> So I think that's about it. We're running long, and I'm tired. So, and I gotta watch the Ted, the Ted Lasso finale now. So, <laughs> until next time, I'm Andy. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. I'm Catherine. Go forth and be hurtful. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Weirdos? Weirdos. Weirdos. <gasps> They're nearly gone. Okay, everyone. On the count of three. One, two, three. Bye! Bye.